Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about something I've been very passionate about recently. I've just gotten into it and that is eco-bricking. You cannot recycle these. Once you put your lid on here, do not, do not please put this in your recycle bin. If you're like me and you're an imperfect zero waster, you still create a lot of plastic waste, things like bags of chips. What else do we have in here? Receipts, obviously no one can avoid receipts. This is like a label from the top of my tofu package candy wrappers, frozen fruit, and so much more. I made this video a while ago, but I will leave it linked up here anyways, and that is things that I still buy in plastic as an environmentalist. I should probably make an updated version because some things I have found plastic free recently and some things I buy in plastic that I didn't use to buy in plastic. Um, so if you'd like an update video about that, let me know. And I've mentioned ego breaking a lot on the channel already, and if you're following me on TikTok or Instagram, you already know exactly what we're talking about today. Um, I have a series on TikTok and since Instagram still doesn't have playlists or series or anything. They're just kind of sporadic videos over there on Reels. But even then, that being said, you can only do, I mean, you can do three minute videos now on TikTok, but I still prefer doing the one minute videos because people don't like to watch long videos on TikTok. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to talk about this in full length on YouTube, and that way I can reference it on TikTok and Instagram as well. So first, let's talk about what exactly is an eco brick. They're also sometimes known as bottle bricks, but in short, they are plastic number one bottles. Typically clear, but someone asked about Mountain Dew and like Sierra Mist Sprite bottles, they are tinted green. As long as it is a number one, you're good to go. And if you're also confused, like what is a plastic number one? I have a full video outlining these seven different types of plastic. It is linked above if you'd like to learn more about that. And then you stuff these number one plastic bottles full of non-recyclable or hard to recycle thin plastics. So these are plastics, typically plastic number four, sometimes a plastic six. You can literally put any type of plastic in here, though that being said, we'll talk about the exact procedures on how to build these correctly. Thin plastics do the best because they can compress really small. And a lot of people are like, oh, just take your frozen fruit bags to your local Walmart to drop off in their plastic recycling bin. That works, sure, but I don't shop at Walmart, so it would be an inconvenience for me to drive out of my way to go to Walmart or whatever store accepts them. No stores that I frequent have those drop-off bins, as well as I'm really skeptical about if they actually recycle them. So if you would like me to do a video on that, maybe I can do some research and figure out if they actually recycle them or not. And just like with normal recycling, it is very key, like ultra important that everything is clean and dry. Because let's say I put like a chocolate wrapper down here way in the bottom, it's gonna get moldy, it's gonna um, encourage bacterial growth, and it could literally explode. The point of making eco bricks is to sequester our plastic because normally all this thin plastic would be flying all around. Even if you do put it in your dumpster, even if that trash can gets dumped into a trash truck, taken to the landfill, there are so many chances for that thin piece of plastic to escape one of these bins or bags and then end up in the environment. It can end up in our waterways, in our soil, break down of microplastics. So this is a great way to keep everything contained. It's also a really great way to do a plastic audit. So what a trash audit basically is, is over the course of a week or a month or however long it's taking you to fill up your eco brick, you can look at all the plastic waste that you're creating in your life and think, oh, maybe I don't need to consume this much product or maybe I could find this product plastic free or in paper or so forth. Once you have an abundance of eco bricks, once you have several of them, you can start to build with them, hence their name, eco brick. Before we jump in any farther, let's first talk about what the Global Eco Brick Alliance's standards are for eco bricking. Their criteria are to be created by not-for-profit processes, AKA you shouldn't be selling them, be manually compacted and secure loose plastic into transparent building blocks for reuse, result in more plastic and CO2 being taken out of the biosphere, result in building projects that can contribute to and encourage biodiversity and to raise the collective consciousness about plastic waste. So generally speaking, as I already said, to be an eco brick, you need a PET petroleum number one plastic bottle packed with only plastics that are clean and dry, AKA you also shouldn't be putting metal paper in here. And it needs to have a density between 0.33 grams per milliliter and 0.70 grams per milliliter. And then sealed tight with a screwed lid on. And then the last step, again, we'll be getting more into this later, is you have to put the weight on here like with a Sharpie. I haven't done that for any of mine. I haven't weighed them yet, but that's the proper way. Now, how exactly do you make an eco brick? Step one, I've already talked about it a lot, so I'll keep it short. That is to separate, clean, dry your plastic items. Plastics that you can and should use are styrofoam, grocery bags, packaging, straws, plastic wrap, and similar thin plastics. And I cannot emphasize this enough, as you have already heard me say this probably five times at least, 
your plastics need to be clean and dry. Even if you put like water down way in the bottom of here, that can still mold, it can still mildew, it can still explode. If I have something dirty like greasy chip bags, for example, I will wipe it off with a sponge or a dishcloth and then set it in my dish rack to dry overnight completely. And again, I'll reiterate this as well. You can only put plastics in here. You can put small amounts of like paper, like if you rip a piece of tape off of a package and it has a little bit of paper on it, you can put that in there but it should be like 99% plastic products. That means no metal, paper, or bio matter. And that includes bioplastics as well. So step two is to choose your bottle. Um, this was my first bottle. I, I will admit this wasn't my best bottle choice because who else is using a bottle this shape? It probably is not gonna be the best for building. But these two are identical. They are Powerade bottles, a very common drink. So these will be great for building. And that's really how you wanna choose your bottle is you would you want to choose something that either you personally are going to use or that you think others will use again like these powerade bottles it's a pretty common type of plastic bottle so it's probably a pretty good guess that other people will be using this if i'm going to give it to someone they can find a use for it but as i mentioned if you plan to build yourself the size really doesn't matter so if i was going to use more of these square shaped bottles this would be a great option for me personally and obviously as you can see here too a bigger bottle means that you can fit more plastic inside and you can sequester more plastic that way but of course that also means it will take you longer to compact more plastic into these bigger bottles or if you use like a two liter soda bottle. Step number three, gather your plastics once they are clean and dry and then also a stick or some stick-like material that you can use to push down the plastic. If you're like, what? why do I need a stick? Or why do I need this knife sharpener for my eco brick? This ensures that you get your eco brick as full as possible and as compact as possible. In order to build, you need a sturdy surface. Um, this is my one. I didn't, I'm gonna use this one as an example of what not to do. I did not pack this down well enough in the beginning, so as you can see, I can still push on the bottom. This one, however, I can't push it on at all because I compacted it a lot better. And that's where this comes in handy. I have used things like scissors, a screwdriver, chopsticks. You could use things like a wooden spoon. This is my personal favorite tool. Thank you to my mom for giving me this. She sent it to me like I didn't even ask. This is so great. Um, because I was finding while the chopstick does reach the bottom, it's so thin that it really doesn't push the plastics very well. And I broke the tip of one of them. So it's very fragile. A screwdriver worked really well. Um, but as you can see, like this is a pretty wide stick. So anything that has a wider base will help to ensure that it gets as compact as possible. And then you simply just start pushing. Um, what I like to do too, is I like to um, put a lot of small pieces in and then put a big piece over top so that I can push the big piece. And that big piece in return pushes all the little pieces as well, because even with a really good tool, it's still hard to push down the really small pieces. And step four, the fun part, finally start packing your eco brick. So this is generally the size I go for when I'm cutting my bioplastics, not bioplastics, these are regular plastics. This came right off of a piece of groceries. This is what I typically aim for around the size of a credit card. So something like this. But sometimes I also go a little bit bigger, like this this scrap that came off of my tofu container. I just kept it this big. It's like twice the size that I normally would put it as, but that's okay too. This like piece of plastic that I ripped off of a bag of pearl couscous, I left it as it was. And then receipts too, <laughs> no matter how long they get, I just crumple them up and then put it inside. This can also be a really fun way to like color coordinate your building project. If you're building a garden bed and you want it to be aesthetically pleasing, you could do, you can make it red and blue themed. You could make it silver. You could put yellow in the bottom. They generally recommend us to put like one big piece in so that it has like a colorful, it would, it would look kind of like this on the bottom so that you have like a full yellow bottom instead of different colors. I'm not in it for the aesthetics, so do what you want with the colors. And then just continue to pack your eco brick and keep packing and keep packing and keep packing. The smaller the pieces, the more dense it will become. And then of course, once you get filled to the top, like as you can see, this one looks pretty full. It's not as dense as the other two, so I know it's not done yet. Like this bottle has like no give to it. That's when you break out your stick, you push it down and you're like, wow, I have so much more room left in my eco brick. But also with that being said, when you are pushing down your eco bricks, please be careful. Not only might you hurt yourself, you could also puncture your eco brick. And if you puncture your eco brick, it can't be used for building anymore. Step number five is to put your lid on and then weigh and measure it. I already mentioned the desired density. I'll put it again right here on the screen. 
Uh, kitchen scale works great for this. Um, you could probably find one easily secondhand. If you plan on doing eco bricking a lot, I highly recommend just getting your own kitchen scale. But if you're just doing it every now and then to make your plastic footprint smaller when you're sending it to the landfill, you could probably, listen, I don't know if this is right, if this is the right thing to do, but I think you could theoretically take this to the grocery store and use their scale to weigh it. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's free. And then of course, the last thing to know when actually building is to leave some space at the top. As you can see, I didn't quite fill it all the way to the brim. I left some room there and that is to ensure that it doesn't explode. If you compact it too much, it could pop. And you do wanna use a bottle, like something like this with a twist top. You don't wanna do something with like a flip or like, you know, some like water jugs, you just push the lid on. Those aren't very secure. You want something that can screw on. And if you're saving this, don't forget to write your project on here. So you would put your weight, the date, as well as like garden bed or park bench, whatever you're building on there. If you're not using it to build and you're giving it to someone, just leave that part out. But if you wanna learn more about how to build with EcoBricks, as well as some different building methods, there are some links down below from the Global Eco Breaking Alliance. They have some great resources. Now, what do you do with your EcoBricks once they're completed? As I've said a billion times, you can of course use them to build something yourself in your backyard, your front yard, in your local park, at your school, whatever your project may be. But what if you don't have the time, space, energy, etc.? It was just this Earth Day in 2022 that the Global Eco Breaking Alliance launched the Brick Marketplace. This is essentially like Facebook Marketplace, if you're familiar with that. It is a global, a worldwide exchange marketplace where you can trade eco bricks. The link for that will also be in the description. So say I get these three done, I cap them, I weigh them and I'm whatever. I'm like, hey, my name's Emma. I'm from Las Vegas. I have three eco bricks. Here are their sizes and weights and dimensions. Does anybody want them? And then I can ship them to them for free. That being said, if you're like, hey, I ran out of Powerade bottles. I need more Powerade bottles for my project. You can get on there and be like, hey, does anybody have Powerade bottles or similar bottles that I can use for my building project? And you can get eco bricks for free too to build with. But what if you don't wanna ship them? What, should you still eco brick? Is it worth it to eco brick if you're just gonna throw it away? Yes. Now, this is something really important that I should have mentioned in the beginning, and I'll just put this in the beginning. You cannot recycle these. Once you put your lid on here, do not. Do not please put this in your recycle bin because now this is essentially like three different types of plastics, especially if you put the lid on, it might be even four different types of plastics, making it not recyclable. Plastics have to be recycled with like materials, meaning a plastic number one can only be recycled with plastic number ones. And now it also has plastic number four inside, rendering it non-recyclable. That being said, do I think you should still eco brick if you're just gonna send it to the landfill? Yes. Really all comes down to saving space in the landfill and reducing our litter. Originally, all of this would have just gone in my trash bag. It would have gone in my trash bag, in my trash can, in the in the trash truck, and then in the landfill. In your head, you're like, oh, it's all just gonna get buried. It's gonna be fine. But guess what happens? Bags rip. Stuff falls out of trash trucks. Stuff blows out of the landfill. So this could end up being in the ocean. This could end up being in a local forest or something. So instead, even if you're gonna throw it away, I do think that eco breaking is a great way to reduce litter because it's all compact. Nothing's gonna blow out of here because it's so compact. And it's also reducing landfill space. Sure, stuff gets compacted in a trash truck and once it's in the landfill too, but I think this is a great way to like really, really, really compact it. Like, I don't think it would get quite this compact just from a truck. And as I said, I really encourage you to check out that video I linked above and below about why we are running out of landfill space, why it's such an issue and why we need to take action now. So that is a big influence for me, even if I am gonna throw these away, it reduces landfill space drastically, which is becoming of utmost importance. That is all that I have for you today on EcoBricks. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'd love to do a follow-up. And of course, consult the websites I have linked in the description from the Global EcoBrick Alliance. They are the experts after all. And then I'll also leave two of my friends linked down below for on TikTok. So if you're on TikTok, definitely follow them for EcoBricking. And that is Maria from Living Planet Friendly. I think that's her handle. And then Learning with Lacey. Lacey, they both took like eco breaking classes when they were in school. So they are pretty much experts as well. They know a lot about eco breaking. And don't forget to follow me on TikTok because I am posting more of my eco breaking journey over there. I should have mentioned it earlier if you're new here. Don't forget to hit subscribe. I talk about all sorts of things zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste and practical ways to be an activist. Eco breaking is a great way to live a more eco conscious life that doesn't cost you any money. You can also do it like while you're watching Netflix, while you're catching up on podcasts or YouTube. But again, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Let me know if you're gonna start eco-bricking now. If you also, if anybody wants these, like seriously, if anybody wants these, 
I'll probably have a few more before I move that I'm going to need to be getting rid of. Let me know. I will send them to you completely for free and you can use them to build. But that is all that I have for today. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. And until next time, remember that your small actions have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. What was I going to say? However long it takes you to make one of these, BRB. I don't quite remember where I was, but I think I was somewhere around Plastic Audit. We'll be talking about that in just a second. Oh, no, we're not. We're talking about it right now. Okay, goodbye.